Hello and welcome back to BioClass Bites. In this video, we are going to talk about history of the earth. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. These are the unit and lesson titles for this video series and in this video, we are going to focus on history of the earth. So the history of the earth um, um, is actually very much concerned with the development of the planet from its per formation up to its present day um, condition. And see here um, an artist's con con conception of what how the earth probably looked like during the Hadean Eon. Okay? If you still remember our lesson on earth's energy, our earth started out to be a very, very hot ball of molten lava. Okay? And over the course of billions and millions of years, our earth eventually cooled down. But in the past, our earth is so hot that water cannot... Um, cannot stay in its liquid form it always it just evaporates because of extreme heat heat nearly all branches of natural science have contributed to our understanding of the earth's past um, we have established this in our lesson on origin of the earth that the age of the earth is approximately one third of the age of the universe so um, the, earth, the universe is around 14.3 14.5 billion years old so the earth is around 4.3, 4.5 billion years old. So one third of the age of the universe. And in that, in that time of 4.5, 4.3 billion years, a lot of geological change has occurred. Um, and it also accompanied um, biological changes or the evolution of living things on our planet. If you could still remember um, our lesson on earth systems, the Gaia theory, um, it was actually proposed by... Um, Lynn Margulis and, and uh, John James Lovelock, that the Earth is actually a living system, a living, dynamic, synergistic system in which, um, in which its activities were actually directed to promote and preserve life on its uh, surface. So I have several recommendations for you to watch and visit. So this one, Our Story in One Minute, I recommend that you watch this video. Very informative. It's it's a fa it is um a fast forwarded video that shows the events of the geologic time scale. So um I'll provide the link in the description below. This one is from History History um Network History Channel. This is actually um a video um found on their website. Still the geologic time scale, but a more detailed description of what happened. I will provide the link in the description below. This is a video, The Geologic Time from Discovery. This is quite a, a, a longer video with much more information. I recommend that you watch this. Again, I'll provide the link in the description below. So this is the geologic time scale. Okay. So the geologic time scale showed us, shows us what happened when we divide the, the Earth's age into eons, into eras, into periods. And what are the significant events during that time? Okay, um, it's termed uh, as geologic because mostly it refers to the events on on the Earth's surface together with the evolution of living things. So the Earth is around 4.3, 4.5, 4.6 billion years old, and during those time, these are the uh, from those time these are the significant events that happened over time. So around 4 billion years ago, the oldest rocks uh, were were dated. On our planet so that's when the oldest rocks uh, start, start uh, were started to appear or, or were discovered and then around uh, three three billion years ago uh, oldest fossils of the cells were discovered or this were the time where we're in the oldest cells uh, started to emerge and then two billion years ago the evolution of cells in the nucleus then followed by uh, the precambrian era okay and then you have your Cambrian period, the Cam Cambrian explosion of all those are invertebrates, followed by the different periods or division, a Silurian, Devonian, and then you have your Paleozoic era. That's a bigger, a bigger chunk of the geologic time scale. Devonian, Pennsylvanian, Permian, Triassic. Okay, this is the periods of the dinosaurs: Permian, Triassic, Jurassic. Um, so this is until the Mesozoic era. Okay, or somewhere, uh, Mesozoic, it's in the middle. Okay, then right after that is the Cenozoic era. That's the modern, modern era. You have your Eocene period, Oligocene period, Miocene, Pleistocene, and now we are here on the modern era 
the Holocene Epoch in the Quaternary Period of the Cenozoic Era. So this is where our humans appeared. Oh, did you know that humans are quite a young species? We are only around 200,000 years old. That's the age of our species. 200,000. We just appeared, if you compare this in a year, we just appeared on the last day of the month, December, December 31 at 11.59 p.m. So we are quite a young species. So most of the descendants of the modern species, the, the reptiles right now, are the descendants of the dinosaurs. And they've been here 44 million years ago or 206 million, million years ago. The plants, um, algae, are older than us. They appeared somewhere here. So, yeah, so that's the geologic time scale. Now, this is an interactive geologic time scale from Dino 101. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, to show it here in, in my video, but um, I recommend that you check this out. This is actually a fun interactive website. It will allow you to zoom through the, the, the eons, the eras, the periods, and then it will provide you the um, it will provide you link. Uh, it will provide you information on the significant events of that particular time. So I will provide the link in the description below. So, um, again, um, the true age of the Earth is around from 4.3 to 4.6 billion years old. We are one-third of the age of the universe. And it, we formed around the same time as the rest of our solar system. Um, however, the oldest rocks that our geologists have found um, are around 3.9 billion years old. So, um, it means that for between the difference of 4.6 and 3.9, perhaps some of those... Um, some of those rocks have undergone the primitive rock cycle. Some of them have been subducted um, deeper, deeper into the mantle and have been recycled. So whenever we talk about the history of the Earth or the geologic time scale, the, the, main, the main question that scientists are still trying to answer is, when did all life first appear and how did it happen? So among all of these periods and era, specifically, specifically when did life on Earth started and how did it the how did it evolve into different forms and variety that we see today? So these are the lithified stromatolites found in West, uh, Western Australia. They are the first direct fossil traces of life on our planet. So it's a very well studied site um, in Australia. So this one is another important interactive website. I, I don't think I'm allowed to show it here, but I'll provide the link in the description below. The, turn, the 25 biggest turning points in Earth's history. So similar to a geologic time scale, it shows you the significant events of what's happening uh, on the different eras, periods of, um, of Earth. Now these are video recommendations, um, but I've taken it out from the... Um, the process of evolution unit which we will tackle um, at the end of the semester um, so these are still in interesting videos about uh, geologic time scale so if you want you could check this out so this is one is from ted ed um, four ways to understand the age of the earth um, a brief history of geologic time from pbs eons and npr's skunk bear earth's entire history i'll provide the links in the description below so, the biological and geological future of our planet can be extrapolated based on what has happened in the past and taking into consideration several long-term influences. So, we know what happened in the past, we know where, are, where we are going, what's happening at the present, so we can predict what's happening in the future. However, we have to factor in some long-term um, effects or long-term influences, include, including the chemistry of the Earth's surface, the rate of cooling of our planet's interior, what's happening to primordial heat and radiogenic heat, the gravitational interaction with actions with other solar objects of the solar system, and the steady increase in the sun's luminosity. I hope this will not scare you, or you already know this, that our sun is actually uh, is only getting bigger and bigger and will eventually become a red giant. It's, it's small right now when compared to the rest of the stars in the Milky Way and in the universe. Um, so it's still growing, it's still evolving. So there's a chance that as it becomes bigger in the future, it could swallow up the terrestrial planets, Mars, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Uh, ah, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Earth. But, you know, do not worry too much. Uh, it will happen, you know, billions of years into the future, perhaps by that time. 
we have learned, we have uh, created the technology for interstellar travel. We can go, we have, we can go to hyperspace just like in movies um, like Star Wars and Star Trek. So do not worry too much about it. But it's fun to know that we will eventually end up being eaten by the sun. One important factor that we have to consider is the influence of technology um, being introduced by humans, such as climate engineering. Um, I think I've mentioned desertification and human activities influencing soil erosion in the previous, in the previous videos. Um, so all the activities, climate change, um, loss of biodiversity, um, change, changing, uh, uh, hastening of geological processes, uh, due to human activities are actually causing significant changes to the planet. So these are the possible futures of our uh, planet. So um, I've mentioned this a while a while ago. So there's a chance that the there's a huge chance chance that the Earth uh, that the Sun will grow into a red giant swallowing up our planet. So as it goes through its gen, um, giant, red giant phase. And then there's a possible uh, scenario wherein the earth will be burned up or scorched as the sun, you know, becomes bigger, red giant uh, face. Seven, seven billion years in the future. Okay? Another possible future of the earth would be the creation of another giant landmass. And scientists are calling it Pangea Ultima. Uh, wherein, due to the movement of the plates, um, uh, as we've discussed in plate tectonics theory, uh, with, supported by the continental drift theory and the spreading of seafloor or concept of seafloor spreading, uh, there's a chance that, high chance that the different um, uh, continents will eventually merge and become one giant uh, landmass called Pangea Ultima. Another possible future of our Earth would be the offset of the tidal waves because of the, Earth, because of the interaction between, the gravitational interaction between the moon and the earth okay so the moon is actually um getting farther and farther away from us and as it as a result of that um it will also affect the tides the the the, the tides that are being pulled by the moon's gravity so if the moon is there then there's a high chance that there's higher tides on this area lower tides on this part of the earth but then as it rot rotates this way there will be higher tides on this on this area then lower tides on this um, area uh, i hope that you've discussed this uh, in grade 7 earth science that the waves the rise and fall of the waves or rise and fall, fall of the tides are directly affected by the moon's gravity so what will happen to this um, region of the earth to these countries these countries when they have such high tides in the future will they be swallowed up are we supposed to build Sky, skyscrapers or tall uh, tall uh, buildings that will not be washed over when there's a high tide in, in this time in the future what about this area will there be really no water what uh, what will happen to the to the sharks to the fish to the whales when there's no water here on this side of the earth so this is just a possible future now this is from bbc future i recommend that you visit their, their website they talk about a lot of the possible um, events in the Earth's future, so a timeline of the far future. I'll provide the link in the description below. I also recommend that you watch this video from Smithsonian Channel, Stephen Hawking's Stark Warning for Humans to Leave Earth. Okay, this is a very interesting video. Um, I'll provide the link in the description below. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye.